On this fourth Sunday of Advent, I just want to take some time um, to discuss specifically the COVID-19 and the restrictions that have been placed upon us. We have decided to allow 30 people to come in our worship space with all the restrictions and the necessity of masks and directions um, given to by myself and other uh, those others that are involved in the liturgy. Let me be clear, there is no guarantee that it's safe to come into the worship space. We're trying to make it as safe as possible. That's why we've limited it to 30. I am asking, especially those that are in vulnerable categories or those who have a pre-existing condition to radio in from your cars in the parking lot. It's the safest way that we can give you communion. I'm also asking, it would be my preference as your pastor to protect you, that you would stay in your car in the parking lot. Let's continue to pray uh, for everybody's safety, and let's pray that no one is infected in our community of COVID during this time. Thou day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadow holds to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, desire of nations, bind in one the hearts of all humankind. Bid thou our sad division cease, and be thyself our prayer. Of peace, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, this fourth Sunday of Advent, we go, we travel to Nazareth to listen and hear the Annunciation and to hear how the Word of God calls us to say yes. And so, to prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let's bring before the Lord our sins and be forever changed by our yes to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you were promised to marry by the angel Gabriel. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you entered this world as a surprise. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to us who are yearning for your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts. 
that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now when David the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See, now I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you, David, that the Lord will make you a house when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors. I will raise up your offspring after you who will come forth from your body and I will establish his kingdom. I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne, David, shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, 
You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to the one who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed that which was kept secret for long age, oh, excuse me, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Behold, I am the handmaid, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. He came to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He 
You will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The gospel of the Lord. This Advent, we have been focusing on prophets. And we get a prophet today who changed all of human history in this scene of the Annunciation. Mary of Nazareth, with a visitation by the angel Gabriel, we celebrate her prophetic courage and her dangerous memory. The prophet comes in many different ways, and we've seen in art and poetry and theater beautiful scenes of the Annunciation. And art directs us prophetically towards beauty. I would like to share about an artist that I believe is a prophet and paints the Annunciation. Henry Oswald Tanner was born in Pittsburgh in 1859. His father, Benjamin Tucker Tanner, was a bishop, uh, an African Methodist of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. His mother, Sarah Elizabeth Miller, escaped slavery as a child. His parents gave him the middle name Osawa to honor the anti-slavery campaign launched three earlier three years earlier by John Brown in Osawatomi, Kansas. And as we know, right here in Harper's Ferry, John Brown started out a pacifist, but saw violence as a way that he had to address it, at least for him. Racism. Henry Osawa Tanner takes his life experience of racism um, and paints the annunciation from this experience of his mom being a runaway slave, of his dad who had versed him well in the scriptures, and as he grew in his ability in art, he would go to Paris and study, and a wealthy individual would send him to Palestine. And so all these images come together of light coming down. No angel, just light. And this is the Annunciation of Mary sitting, a black woman, enfolded in heavy drapes of bedclothes and her own robe. Her gaze is attentive to that light. What Mary's gaze is fixed on is this tall, thin pillar of white cloud at the end of the bed. Perhaps Tanner is remembering the presence of God, the angel of Exodus described as a cloud that leads the Israelites into the future, would lead Mary into hers, and will lead us through the ordinary, familiar events and places where God is present if we will only recognize him and respond with our own, here I am, Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. You see... Henry takes this image like an old spiritual or like the metaphors of the Exodus story of how slaves were being led to freedom from slavery. And he can see in his mom, in his life, in his current events, how this story is leading his people out of oppression, despite all the racism he and others faced. And the reality is that the racism that he experienced in this country when he went to Paris and married an American woman, he didn't experience that same racism there. 
This reminds us of who Mary was. Too often, images of Mary have been placated and sterilized in the Middle Ages as if she was a queen of heaven, which she wasn't. This courageous woman was on the bottom of the Roman society, under Roman occupation. The danger that she may have the Messiah could cause revolution just like John Brown and we've seen happen in this area near Nazareth. The fact that she was found with child and did not know who the father was could mean that she was stoned. And yet the courage, yet the courage that she would say, let it be done to me according to your word. You see, the reading from Samuel, God's dream for a fitting home for his son, was very different from that divine place that David proposed. After David has settled down, and this phrase is significant, in his house of cedar, David has the bright idea of also building a fine house in which God could dwell. David is surprised by God's response spoken through the prophet Nathan, who lets him know that settling down is not characteristic of Israel's God who is not a God to be circumscribed and enthroned and sterilized like the gods of their pagan neighbors. The God of Israel is a free Exodus God who prefers to move among the people. David's God, Mary's God, Henry Osawa Tanner's God is a God of surprises who always takes the initiative and often turns upside down the tables of our expectations. This God points to the future. One of David's descendants will build a house for God's name and establish a kingdom that will be everlasting. This is not a begin building, but will begin in the womb of Mary Nazareth as the Spirit touches that and brings about a birth. We're not to settle down, but follow this unruly word of God, our yes, as Pope Francis tells us. But imagine the extraordinary events that took place in Nazareth, far from the center of power of religion and, 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 and political power in Jerusalem, that we can feel so helpless and insignificant and yet this woman on the margins is where God is. And as we've seen again and again with the prophets, if we want to discover God, we have to go to the edge. We have to go to the margins. We have to wake up to the reality of human history. And all of its political or religious abuse or whatever it is, that God is present in the events of human history. That's what the Annunciation is about. And that's what, thank God, Henry Ossawa Tanner reminds us of. And so have we seen it this Advent? Can we see God on the fringes? Can we see God in the edges? Like Mary, like black women who are courageous in our society, calling for racial justice and Black Lives Matter. Or a pandemic who's wiped out many, sadly, people, and yet God present in that suffering and a need for a vaccine. At the border, children in cages, as Jesus was a refugee. In these events of human history, in the sexism, and we can see in our own church, and the abuse of women, and the call to be set free. For equality. These are the dangerous memories of the Annunciation. This is where the unruly word of God is present. And as Paul reminds us in R R Romans, that, that the secret mystery has been disclosed in this picture, in this image, in this reality of the Annunciation. It's present. 
And our challenge this last Sunday of Advent is what Augustine calls us to do. That we would be impregnated by that unruly word of God. That God desires and is going to bring to birth if we say yes. And all of human history depends upon us, folks. Mary didn't have to say yes. And yet, how different the world would be if it wasn't for our yes. And so, we renew our baptism here in a moment. And we celebrate all the dangerous memories we've talked about this Advent. We celebrate Alfred Delp who brought about the unruly word of God in chains as he was executed by Hitler. We celebrate Taylor de Chardin, who was on the trenches of World War I and saw a better future. We celebrate Henry Osawa Tanner, Benjamin Tucker Tanner, Henry Osawa Tanner, who depicted his people being set free with the Annunciation. And we celebrate John the Baptist, who takes us to the wilderness, and Mary the Mother of God, who reminds us that we're to be impregnated with the Word of God and to say, let it be done to me according to your Word. In recognizing that we've been born again by the waters of baptism, that we bring forth and respond to that new birth and say, let it be done to me according to thy word, we respond with our yes through the renewal of our baptismal vows. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do believe. God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all of our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. We pray now as members of the human race, always waiting for good news. Our response is, come Lord Jesus. For all believers who continue to wait and hope for the final fulfillment of God's promises. In hope and anticipation, we pray, come, come, Lord Jesus. For all the world suffering who have given up waiting for peace and justice, in hope and anticipation, we pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For those who are too busy, too chaotic, too troubled to look for God's presence in and around them, in hope and anticipation, we pray, come, Lord Jesus. For all those who are ill, especially Bill Hennessy and Jack Snyder, and all who care for them, in hope in anticipation, we pray, come, Lord Jesus. For all who have died, especially Rosemary Manzella, sister of John Griffith, Jim Wittig, Jean Averett, Thomas Daniel Bonner, father of Leo Bonner, and Martin Gledour, 
stepfather of Rico Massey Mino, James Robert Bob Bergen, uncle of Teresa Rush, Jean Heidler, sister of Sheila Hennessy, Stanley Belchick, husband of Beverly Belchick. For those who grieve, in hope and anticipation, we pray. Come, Come Lord Jesus. The parish community would like to support you in prayer. Please share with us your needs and intentions. We pray for a vaccine. We pray for those that are most vulnerable. We pray for our heroes in grocery stores on the front lines or in the medical field for their protection. We pray for unity in our country. We pray for this last Sunday of Advent that we may respond to that new birth of the Word of God as we're impregnated with that Word in this feast celebration. We pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. God of promise, we are filled with the anticipation, and yet we wait. We long for your ongoing word to sustain us. Keep us expectant so that like Mary, we may receive Jesus with open hearts. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. Our song for the presentation of gifts is The Angel Gabriel from Heaven Came. Verses 1 and 2. The angel Gabriel from heaven came, his wings as drifted snow, his eyes as flame. All hail, said he, O lowly maiden Mary, most highly favored lady, Gloria. For no a blessed mother you shall be, a generation's praise continually. Your son shall be Emmanuel, by seers foretold, most highly favored lady, Gloria. And pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all of God's holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming, coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. 
us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by God's love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you Come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and love, together with Francis our Pope, and Mark, our bishop, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and justice, to peace and and freedom that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we can come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and St. Joseph, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Agnes, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
Sunday of Advent, we pray that that unruly Word of God will come to birth through us and that that fullness of reign of God will come about as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace is my gift to you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer one another a sign of peace. Cordero de Dios, que quitas el pecado del mundo, danos la paz, danos la paz. These are the gifts of God given for us, the people of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is Night of Silence. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, 
so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity through Christ our Lord. the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn is People Look East. The time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today. Love the guest is on the way.